patient call, um, calls the office and says, you know, I heard about HIPAC and I wanted to know if I'd be a candidate. So I talk to them on the phone. We require information for the initial evaluation, being any pathology that they obtained, any surgeries that were done related to this uh, issue, and um, any other testing, CAT, the latest CAT scan and blood work. If we obtain all that information, then I either evaluate it, it would be best to evaluate it prior to them coming so that I have an idea if there are candidates or not. So they make their initial appointment and um, I see them initially before Dr. Barry and we go over their history of what happened, how they're feeling, um, what's been going on the past year since they were diagnosed. And once that's all evaluated, I discuss it with Dr. Barry and we see the patient again together. Um, going over everything and deciding if they're a candidate and we tell them at that time. Went in to see Dr. Berry, absolutely fabulous. Just intelligent, knows about cancer, explained from start to finish what the high pack treatment was about. You, you're, uh, you're afraid or you're uncertain of the unknown. So, you know, he gave me a pamphlet, go home, talk it over with your partner, with your family, then come back to me and tell me what you think. Well, at this point, I'm in survival mode. Oh, this is a go. I've been told I've had stage four cancer, okay? You have to help the doctors help you. You want to save your life. So if you're a candidate for a procedure like the HIPAC, a thousand percent you go for it. Now, you're going to feel sore because I was told I was going to get an incision. Uh, maybe here to here, incision. I was told that stents would be put in to protect my kidneys. I was also told that Dr. Berry would go after the cancer, the tumors that he sees. He would also put a chemo solution in to fight the cancer, the tumors he can't see. I was told I would be sewn back up. I would let that solution do, do it, its work for 90 minutes, a heated solution. After the 90 minutes, I would then get another incision. They would clean it out with saline. I would be stitched back up and I would go to recovery. All of that happened exactly the way he said it was going to happen. The staff was amazing, absolutely amazing. I was blessed and fortunate to have that support and my faith, of course, brought me through. It's been five months, and I'm doing great. I was diagnosed, the first diagnosis was uh, uh, November 3rd, uh, 2010. And that was, uh, that started back when I was going in for a checkup and they found the pileup and removed that. And then after going through extensive radiation and chemo, then the cancer came back in June and Dr. Faki of the University of Michigan uh, you know, wanted me to see Dr. Barry over at, um, at the, over here at the St. John's Providence to see you know, what they could do. I didn't know a thing about it. Um, I just knew what they did was he explained it to me and the doctor and then after, and then, uh, after he explained basically what they do and I had a lot of, lot of soul searching and a lot of decisions to make whether I really wanted to go through this or not. 
uh, I was talking about doing either Avastin, which I didn't want to do because I've heard a lot of nasty side effects on Avastin. So I decided that the high pick would be better. So when Dr. Barry uh, opened me up, he found that he found it was really I was really caked with cancer. So he took what, all what he could out, and uh, then he went ahead and did the high pick treatment, which is you know putting two probes in from the abdomen, two probes, one from the abdomen here and on up, and then closed me up and loaded it with a uh, chemo, heated chemo, which heats, heats up to 107 degrees, and then they shake the daylights out of your abdomen. Then after that, you're done. Then after that, they take the probes out and just allow the healing process to begin. And you're basically, it's a, anywhere from 12, anywhere from a 12 to 16 hour surgery. Mine was 12. And I was in the um, ICU for two, for two days. Normally it's three days, but I survived. <laughs> but I'm faster. <laughs> I was out of the hospital in 10 days instead of two weeks because I, I, my recovery was quicker. On a personal note, um, from what I've understood is 60% of the patients that go through this us, you know, are able to survive it. The other 40% wait too long. So my advice is to people that have waited too long for the, you know, that think they have it, uh, talk to your primary care physician first and then talk to your oncologist and then go ahead and talk to Dr. Barry. Because if you wait too long, like I almost did, uh, it's gonna be too late. My brother found Dr. Barry on the internet and um, I proceeded to go to his office. My brother actually made the appointment for me and I um, came down to see him. I found that it was a very rare cancer and this was a different type of treatment. I didn't know anything about it. But um, I, I just saw Dr. Barry. I felt comfortable with him. I, ver I felt very uh, um, confident in him. Um, and then he told me exactly what the surgery entails. And uh, I did get a second opinion at U of M in Ann Arbor. Um, and I knew what I had to do. I think the cancer itself, or being diagnosed with this cancer is, was the fear. You know, it was scary. It was um, something I kn knew nothing about. I didn't understand what I was gonna have to go through. But the surgery itself, after he explained it, I, I, I just had confidence in him. I didn't have any uh, fear of the surgery. I just had the fear of cancer. The, the surgeon in, Flint, or in Grand Blank said, um, we could remove your appendix. And I did not know that I had cancer in my stomach lining at the time. So if I would have done his surgery, I would have had to gone in for an additional surgery. Um, so I'm very thankful that I had Dr. Berry do my surgery and completely do everything that was needed to be done for my particular cancer. So um, it gives you a lot more security when you know you had it done right rather than having to do it a second time or, or a third time or I had internal chemotherapy so I had no hair loss, I had no um, sickness, um, I didn't feel ill. Um, I think just the only, the two months at home, I had to get strong. I had to get uh, back to myself, the, the actual um, incision and the staples. I think that was the hardest part is uh, just recovering from that. But other than that, I didn't, I didn't take much pain medication after. and. Um, I just tried not to do too much so I wouldn't um, disrupt anything that he did. So today we're going to talk about HIPEC. HIPEC stands for Hyperthermic Intraperitoneal Chemotherapy. And it's the a treatment that we use for patients who've had cancers of a certain organ that have then spread throughout their abdominal cavity. The main cancers that we use this treatment for are tumors of the appendix, tumors of the colon or the rectum, tumors of the stomach, and tumors of the ovary. There are also some more uncommon tumors uh, such as peritoneal mesothelioma and primary peritoneal cancers that if patients have those diagnoses, they're also candidates for these. 
So those patients who've had those tumors and have been told by their doctors or through studies that their tumor has then spread through the abdominal cavity uh, are then potential candidates for having surgery where we not only remove the primary organ where the tumor is, but then we also remove the peritoneum or wherever the tumor has spread to, and then at the same time we put in heated chemotherapy into their abdominal cavity, and then continue the operation, and then reconstruct anything that we may have uh, removed, and then we let them recover. And so the surgery really is two parts. It's a, the first part is really identifying who would benefit from the surgery, and there's a very strict criteria, and I have a whole program where we see patients, evaluate them, in a multidisciplinary way with multiple doctors who take part in this, determine if they're a candidate for surgery. If they are, we then eventually take them to surgery. The first part of the operation is intended to identify the primary tumor if it's still present and remove any tumors that are there. The second part of the surgery is actually the HIPEC part of the, of the surgery where we put in the heated chemotherapy. Yeah, the benefits of HIPEC, uh, as we've seen over really over the last 20 years, uh, in the late 80s, surgeons began doing this operation and using this technique for tumors of the appendix. And the benefits that we know directly from tumors of the appendix and tumors of the ovaries are that if we can operate on a patient who's had appendix cancer, for example, that's spread to the peritoneal cavity, if we can remove all the tumor and do a high pec procedure, those patients will clearly live longer than not doing it or giving those patients chemotherapy alone. It's, there's no longer really any debate in the literature and there's no debate among doctors, especially for tumors of the appendix. For other primary tumor sites, for example, peritoneal mesothelioma or peritoneal cancers that primarily come from the peritoneum, there is also a direct benefit in survival from doing this operation. For other cancers, mainly colon and rectal cancer, really in the last 10 to 15 years, we're, wor we're working more on that specific site to determine whether there is a survival advantage in doing this. We know from purely a tumor standpoint, if we can remove a significant burden of tumor in some patients who have colon or rectal cancer and then offer them HIPEC, we are seeing some improvement uh, in their post-operative course and in their survival. And there is even some data to suggest that with colon and rectal cancer patients, if we select them well, give them chemotherapy and offer them surgery, they may have a survival advantage, advantage over those patients who got chemotherapy alone. So really the advantage and the goal of HIPEC is to try to offer patients another alternative besides systemic chemotherapy that may improve their survival and improve their prognosis overall.